Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNO Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Journalism and New Media Studies, Sojans, Diploma Postgraduate Diploma Programs, Postgraduate Diploma in Electronic Media, PGDEME, Semester I, MJM, 0 to 4 Media and Society, Block 1 Mass Media and Society, Unit 1 Understanding Media and Society, 1.0 Introduction. The relationship between media and society is symbiotic. Society has a history of millions of years while media, especially the mass media, of a little over a century, but both depend on each other for sustenance. Society's survival and growth depends on a number of factors among which a system of communication is crucial. As people in a society get information, education and entertainment through communication. In this block, we shall discuss various pertinent issues relating to media and society such as audience, media literacy and media policies. Such an analysis becomes important as in a short span, media, especially the news media has been able to influence policy and also question those in authority in the public interest, being the watchdog in a democracy. New media is also expected to take up issues on behalf of the public, articulate public opinion, set agenda for discussion and debate. Over the years, the news media has become so pervasive that many critics see it as a power institution. In fact, any debate on the mass media oscillates between two extremes depending on who is saying it, some swear by media's unbridled power, while others believe that media do not affect the lives of the people. Whatever may be the view, there is no gainsaying the fact that media have become a part of the everyday life of an average individual. This unit is aimed at synergizing various aspects and issues that are relevant to the understanding of the concepts context and relevance of media in society. Media is a social institution and as stated earlier, it draws its sustenance from the society and does not exist outside of the society. 1.1 Learning Outcomes After reading the unit You should be able to times define society and mass media, times analyze the interpolation of media and political system, Times examine the corporate control of media. Times debate on regulation versus self-regulation. Times deliberate on the interrelation of media and public opinion. And times trace the emergence of the new media and analyze its impact on society. One point to defining society and mass media. A society can be defined as a community of people living in a particular region and having shared customs laws and organizations. A society, however, can be either homogeneous or heterogeneous. By a homogeneous society, it is meant a society whose members share similar values, language, religious framework and ethnicity. Examples of such societies include the Japanese, Chinese, Red Indian and Zulu societies. By a heterogeneous society, it is meant where there will be a diversity of people in terms of race, culture, religions, etc. A good example to cite of a heterogeneous society is of the USA, where one finds people from different races. E.g. white, Asians, African Americans, Hispanics, etc. inhabit but follow different religions and speak different languages, though English is the common link language communication is the basic link among various echelons in a society. With the coming of mass media, one finds the society's reflection in news and entertainment. Programs At a micro level, one learns about various groups divided by caste, custom, religion or creed either through interpersonal interaction or through media programming. It is not uncommon to find references to various castes and communities in the media. To give an example in the Indian context, media, 
generally debates and discusses voting patterns based on caste during election times. One finds media covering events and agitations organized by people belonging to various castes. One has seen coverage of agitation by various caste groups on securing quota for reservation in government jobs and admissions in schools and colleges. The Jat agitation in 2016 in Haryana which resulted in large-scale damage to public property and the Gujar agitation in 2019 in Rajasthan, which saw disruption in train traffic, can be cited as the two examples. The mainstream newspapers in their matrimonial ads also divide the ads based on gender and castes. The purpose of giving these examples is to make you aware on how media reinforces and establishes what happens within a society or group. As the media professionals also come from the same social milieu, so their writings and views are likely to reflect their biases as well. One point to point one historical context, the element of large-scale mass dissemination of ideas was present even when there were no mass media like the newspapers. Radio and Television The people were reached out through meetings, congregations, word of mouth, grape wine and inscriptions on varying issues including religious propaganda and citizens' charters. We have discussed in detail the historical growth of mass communication in Unit 5, Block 2 of Course 1. Here we shall briefly touch upon some landmarks to link up with our main discussion. King Ashoka's relics on the Iron Pillars Inscribing the teaching of Lord Buddha have stood the tests of time and can be seen today even after thousands of years. He also spread Buddhism in many countries through his emissaries. This was largely independent of any media in the contemporary sense of the term. The mass media as we know it today is about a century old and can be traced to when newspapers became available for a few pennies. The period was known as the era of penny press. The First World War saw the mobilization of press and radio for nationalist war aims of contending states. This left little doubt about the power of the media, influence on the masses, who were effectively managed and directed towards war aims. By 1925, there was already a strongly held view that mass publicity had the power to rule the people and influence international alliances. Late 19th century thinkers were conscious of the great transformation that was taking place in which the slower pace of change was giving way to a faster pace. The experience of Nazi Germany and the erstwhile Soviet Union further reinforced this view that mass media could be a powerful source of propaganda on behalf of the ruling elite. Hitler and Goebbels believed that media was an instrument of propaganda and that if a lie was repeated hundred times, it had the potential of becoming a truth. Hitler probably was one of the early powerful men who had an idea about the potential of imagery and media after the Second World War we witnessed a rapid growth of media which affected all spheres of life. In the development process also, the role of media was recognized and due consideration was given by all societies including the developing world. While the media has historically been viewed as overly aggressive and insatiable in its enthusiasm for the latest and hottest news, their watchdog function in a Democratic society posits that people must know what their governments are doing. The media has the capacity to hold the government accountable, forcing them to explain their actions and decisions, all of which affect the people they represent. The assumption in some societies is that the press speaks for the people, thus the freedom of speech and freedom of the press acts are seen in the context of the public interest. Any effort, therefore, on the part of the government to 
curtail news media's freedom is seen as against people's right to free and fair information when during emergency in 1975 to 77 in india press coverage was censored the indian express left the editorial space to denote censorship The blank editorial metaphor of censorship was soon adopted by other newspapers including the Statesman recorded the paper later today in the era of globalization this role of mass media has undergone a sea change it is often argued that news media has become a commodity there is also a growing criticism against media for projecting unabashed violence according to the leftist thinking media is an important tool to serve specific socio-economic and political interests of the dominant class media academic stanley j baran in his book introduction to mass communication media literacy and culture quoted theorist marshall mcluhan to explain the importance of mass media in our life marshall mcluhan would often ask does a fish know its wet the answer he would say is no the fish's existence is so dominated by water that only when water is absent the fish becomes aware of its condition so is with people and mass media an average person is so inundated with media messages in her his everyday life that she he is often not conscious of the presence or influence of media in life media scholars Karen J Deming and Samuel L Becker point out in their book Media in Society that media operation are too vital to our lives to be disregarded indeed being the fourth and the strongest pillar of democracy media enjoys a place of privilege in the society various scholars and critics have argued that media is not only a mirror of the society but also an instrument of social change Media must have a close look at the society in all its manifestations with a penetrating eye. Media theorists Fred S. Siebert, Theodore Peterson, and Wilbur Sachram in their book Four Theories of the Press argue that press always take the form and coloration of the social, political structures within which it operates. You have read the normative media theories, authoritarian, libertarian. communist media and social responsibility theories in detail in unit to block one of course one which are relevant to understand the interrelation of media and society communication scholars daniel c hallin and paolo mancini while discussing the four theories of press in their book comparing media systems three models of media and politics argue one cannot understand the news media without understanding the nature of the state the system of political parties the pattern of relations between economic and political interests and the development of civil society among other elements of social structure 1.2.2 information age context now let us look at how the media has changed in the information age with the coming of modernity of which proliferation of mass media has been one of the key outcomes societies across the globe have undergone a sea change in media reach and access media has played a significant role in modernization be it the rise of nationalism individualism objectivism democratization secularization or urbanization Today almost every aspect of human life is somehow connected to or dependent on the media. It will not be an exaggeration to say that every individual in some or the other way is a media consumer. As per the latest media reports, mobile phones will soon outnumber human beings on this planet. A smartphone with a few centimeters screen combines all the media in it that include access to newspapers television channels cinema and various social media platforms that connect people through interpersonal communication on one on one and group basis information now reaches to put it proverbially at the speed of thought 
The internet has indeed made the world flat, cutting across artificial boundaries of geography, states, caste, color and creed. There is no gain saying that without media, society may not be able to conduct its affairs effectively. Later in the unit, we shall discuss the opportunities and challenges posed by the new media, especially in the context of Internet within countries as well as in the international arena. 1.3 Interpolation of Media and Political System In a democratic system, mass media play a key role as the very existence of the government depends on the people's support and this is where the media acquire center stage in politics. In order to reach out to people, the government needs mass media and the news media on its part works as a link between the government and the people, as a carrier of information and at other times with its own agenda. When media writes positively, it is not uncommon to find politicians swearing by what is written and broadcast to deride their rivals, but when media is critical, Politicians often blame media for bias and trial against them. Communication academic Jeffrey Craig in his book, The Media Politics and Public Life, says, the political system exerts a less formal kind of control over. The media landscape through personal influence of politicians and political actors on media owners and journalists. Craig maintains that the influence of political Actors over media on a day-to-day -day basis can be readily observed and realized. Governments have the power to enact legislations through which they can bring considerable pressure on the media. Governments are often criticized for their power to manipulate and maneuvers media by deciding on which information is to be released, when and how. Political management of the media also takes place through various types of political communication in the form of media, events, briefings, news conferences, interviews, photo opportunities, etc. Media, being information-hungry, often ends up publishing what it gets from the sources of authority. 1.4 Corporate Control of Media As stated earlier, the ownership of media has its effect on the content. Business Interests own more than 90% media the world over. In India, the last two decades have been very defining. All kinds of people and interests have some stake in media holdings. These include politicians, political parties, business houses, and national or international conglomerates, etc. Media ownership serves to immediate interests for the owners, Viz, it is an industry that gives the owner the profit and to, and it lends the owner a voice to give an example. Reliance Industries Limited, RIL, is said to have taken equity in more than 25 media channels' newspapers. This should be an area of concern for society in general and critics in particular. Hypothetically, let us assume that there is bad news about any of the RIL companies, it will be of empirical research, interest to find out how these media channels, newspapers that have RIL stake, cover that news and it will take some time to understand the full import in these media companies. 1.5 Regulation versus Self-Regulation The news media can enjoy the freedom of expression only in a democracy, but it is ironical that it is in democratic countries, one finds authorities obsessed with controlling or regulating the media, and India is no exception. The infamous clamping of emergency on the 25th June 1975 saw censorship and intimidation of media on a large scale. Despite an overt control on the content to which many newspapers fell prey to, some newspapers did not relent. They would rather have a blank editorial or reportage than publishing a censored one. The Congress party suffered a defeat in the elections of 1977 and the serving Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, lost her own seat. 
the journalists and their professional bodies, after the emergency have tried their best to fight and advocate against government regulation whenever the occasion has demanded. The debates on regulation versus self-regulation have been there for decades, with each side advocating the merits and demerits of a regulated media versus a free media. Some critics have spoken of another way of control exerted by the government that, they feel, the media in general has found difficult to resist. Both the central and the state governments in India issue advertisements worth thousands of crores of rupees in the print and electronic media. Critics feel that covertly, the government controls them denying advertising support. The India Shining campaign by the NDA and the Bharat Nirman campaigns by the UPA came under criticism from some media columnists who commented that there was not. Much criticism in the media on spending taxpayers' money because the various media houses were direct beneficiaries of ad revenue. Communication academic Jeffrey Craig points out that of late, governments all over have developed a more sophisticated understanding of the needs and functions of media. Craig says that this has resulted in shifting the balance of power in the favour of politicians as media is now too dependent on the information supplied by the political actors. He argues that the growing cynicism about politics is said to be the consequence of this process. However, this has led to increasing media literacy as people can now easily decode the intent behind. The Political Messages you will read about media literacy in Unit 3 of this block. 1.6 Media and Public Opinion Media is said to be the articulator as well as the molder of public opinion. It is believed that by putting issues in the public domain, the news media provides various perspectives that help the audience to form informed views and opinions on happenings around them. The media also influences people by its editorials, opinionated articles and debates. American social scientist Kimball Young says, of public opinion as the social judgment of a self-conscious community on a question of general import after rational public discussion. Public opinion, he writes, is formed by verbalized attitudes, beliefs and convictions which are essentially emotional and their associated images and ideas. Public opinion often is formulated in a crisis when people differ in their definitions of new situations. He argues that the stimulus and scope of public opinion have however changed as there is an enormous extension of the range of excitation. American sociologist Herbert Blumer saw public opinion as an aspect of social relations people confront an issue of concern and explore different solutions to the issue through public discussion. On the other hand, the spiral of silence, theory propounded by political scientist Noel Neumann contends that the mass media are a powerful force, not only in establishing public opinion, but in reducing the number of divergent opinions in the society as they articulate 1.6.1 role of media in forming public opinion, Noel Neumann saw mass media as a powerful creator of social reality through their coverage of public events and different opinions. He argues that mass media serve as the representation of the dominant views in the society. Doris Agraba refers to many articles that criticizes journalists of bias against marginalized groups who are shown in distorted light. The authors argue that many examples demonstrate that there are characteristic, culturally linked patterns of news framing that depend very much on the cultural orientation of the story's narrator. Elizabeth Empers looks at the agenda-setting theory in the context of the power of the news media to structure the importance of political issues in the public's mind. In other words, she explains that through gatekeeping, the news media select and highlight certain events, people and issues. 
Because of repetition of issues, people tend to adopt the news media's agenda and start believing that these same events, people and issues are more important than those not covered. American sociologists Lazarus Field and Martin held that media performed a status conferral function for society by focusing attention on important people, events and issues. The news media do not limit themselves to just establishing the salience of certain topics. Research has shown that how the news is presented also has a bearing on what people think about issues and events covered. To take an example of a natural disaster, the cloudburst in Uttarakhand in 2013 amidst heavy rains flooded the regions of Uttarakhand. The incident brought the coverage on the nature's fury and devastation caused in the Himalayan state in the living rooms of the people for weeks together, media's attention was not just on the efforts at rescuing thousands of stranded pilgrims, it also brought to attention through its coverage, the various views, opinions, news reports on how the fragile ecology of Himalayan region was utterly disregarded by the commercial developers in connivance with the authorities to reap monetary benefits. It also stressed on the unpreparedness of various administrative agencies in handling a mammoth crisis like that one. The media coverage brought to issue the crisis at not only a micro level but also macro level, cautioning about many more such disasters in store. If all the stakeholders, especially the government, did not feel concerned about the fragile, Himalayan ecology. The various media, especially the mainstream news channels, were questioning, grilling and seeking answers from the political bosses on their lackadaisical attitude, especially after the alarm bells were rung by the controller and auditor general's report months in advance on the mindless construction work and its possible impact on the state. Media also reflected on how different political parties were trying to make political mileage out of a human disaster through blame games. Media in covering incidents and events become an interpreter of reality. People who watch news get influenced by what appears as news 1.6 point to relationship between media and society. Media institutions are a part of society. The important reason why the news, media ought to be free and fair, is its watchdog function. The news media is expected to keep a close watch on the government, business and other institutions. It is expected to bring issues in the public domain for debate and discussion. It is, therefore, incumbent on the part of the government to not only protect the autonomy of the press, but also ensure a free and fair distribution of news to the public. This is in the interest of ensuring that people who depend on information provided by media to remain updated and connected to the world. Media on its part is expected to share news without fear or favour and help in articulating public opinion on issues that are of concern to them. Media works as a conduit between the public and the powers that be 1.7 new media and its impact on society, the technological development and socio-economic, political and ideological context during 1970s gave rise to new media. The term became popular in the 1990s with the emergence of videos, new ways of delivering television via cable and satellite direct to home on a subscription basis. Communication scholars described this phenomenon as the first way. By 1990 as the home video rental became a very lucrative and popular business. Consequently, film studios began to release the films simultaneously in cinema halls as well as on the videos. Example, big corporations like Fox, Warner and Columbia Trister were prominent in the video production and distribution, dot, with the coming of the World Wide Web, followed by the popularity of social media, the world has not been the same. Many feel that Internet has facilitated 
democratization of information anyone can post anything on the net and be heard internet has cut across artificial boundaries created by geographical borders and socio-economic divide it has helped create a world community seamless markets and common consumers in an era of instant connect we cannot treat any issue as local in fact anything happening anywhere in the world can ring a bell across continents one finds internet especially the social networking sites including facebook and microblogging site twitter becoming a virtual turf for gathering followers and putting forth one's ideology despite the fact that the penetration of the internet is lower when compared with television and print media but the various social media platforms have seen the medium grow exponentially in the last few years the reach and access especially via the mobile phones is expected to grow many folds in the near future 1.7.1 evolution of internet let us now understand what is internet and trace its evolution media academic strobhar and laros describe internet as network of networks that connects computers worldwide so that they can exchange messages with one another and share access to files of computer data as media scholars lynn gorman and david mclean in their book media and society into 21st century point out that in its early developmental phase the internet not only provided a means of communicating and transferring information it also offered new and alternative modes of expression internet simply speaking is a network of computers across the world connected to each other to share data it is also called the web cyberspace virtual world or the net as well this data is available on various websites hosted by the computers akin to the real world one needs to visit a site to get access to data or information the programs which help the users access these websites are called web browsers tim berners lee introduced the first web browser world wide web in 1991-92 the web back then was just an accumulation of static pages containing information in text or pictures the communication was only one way as there was no method for the web surfer to provide feedback this was called web 1.0 version web 2.0 is the version which initiated interactivity on the internet the interaction is to fold with the content and with the people so one can today upvote and comment on youtube videos as well as post on a friend's facebook page web 3.0 is the future where the communication will not merely be limited to people across the web but between machines connected as well eg today when your laptop automatically starts updating some software through the net it is communicating with the parent website Google search is another example where a program navigates through all the web pages available on its index to find what the user is looking for with such a large network and multiple communication channels and novel methods the internet began the era of globalization in its true sense it also gave birth to many powerful corporations like microsoft apple yahoo oracle etc these are the software industries working on making computers useful to humans offline and online by the year 2000 internet had heralded significant changes in global communication and removing the limitations of time and boundary facilities services like email led to the instant contact with individuals electronic Networking proved that Marshall McLuhan's concept of global village seemed to be on its way to reality. 1.7.2 Emergence of Social Networking Sites By late 1990s blogs emerged on the web. Blog simply is another word for weblog. It is a website 
posting text entries in a sequential manner, sharing information and or opinions on any given topic. Lack of censorship and direct reach to the audience without any gatekeeping made blogs a popular web publishing tool, they soon became a source of information supplementing mainstream media coverage with different views and perspectives. Web 2.0 enabled readers to provide their feedback in the form of comments as well as posting video clips, blogs, audio clips, audio log, etc. By 2003, user-generated content, UGC, comma, the rapidly expanding phenomenon of online social networking through websites, such as YouTube, Orkut, Facebook, Twitter, etc. emerged on the scene. Everyone could be the audience as well as the producer. With people getting in touch with each other virtually, came the social networking sites, SNS. They allowed people to connect with each other, communicate, share personal information, photographs, videos, audio clips and opinions online, publicly and privately, information is power, is best elucidated by the fact that a simple message on a Social networking site galvanized thousands at the Tahrir Square in Egypt, Facebook and Twitter have become the focal point of action protest in countries like Egypt, Tunisia and Yemen. In the Indian context, Facebook and other social networking sites helped mass protest against the rape of a para-medical student in the nation's capital in December 2012. Anti-establishment messages flooding, various social networking sites forced the government to take action against the culprits of the heinous crime. Facebook and other social networking sites also motivated people, cutting across age, social and economic barriers to come out in thousands to support anti-corruption movement catalyzed by Anna Hazare in 2011, 1.7.3 The Dark Side of Virtual World First, the world was mesmerized by the medium, next it got hooked on it, and then came the side effects that were initially unforeseen. Three major threats to the people population the virtual world are 1. Malware These are malicious software that spread like virus from one system to another to seek out data unknown to the users. The software copy themselves on each connected system and spy on the activities of the users. In times of net banking, these viruses are a threat to personal security amounting to cybercrime. 2. Surveillance In order to curb cyber and real-life terrorism, Security agencies need to monitor communication happening over the web. Agencies like NSA, FBI, etc. intercept, decode and analyze the information being shared over the web, private or public, for national security interests. Some could argue that this is a violation of personal privacy rights. 3. Censorship even though censorship on World Wide Web is a long-standing debate, some countries, like China and North Korea, ban or limit the use of Internet for their own internal security and others have rules to track and shut down child pornography websites. TRAI banned hundreds of porn websites in India in 2015 in the light of the above arguments and analysis. The growth of Internet as an important mass medium cannot be ignored. As communication, researchers Morris and Ogan have rightly put, if we ignore the computer, media, not only will the discipline of mass communication be left behind, but we will also miss an opportunity to explore and rethink answers to some of the central questions of mass communication research. However, Curran and Seaton comment that the net has changed out of all recognition from its pioneering days when the vision of the net as the redeemer of social ills was first promulgated. The civic discourse and subculture experiment that so excited early net commentators has given way to an increased emphasis on entertainment, business and electronic mail. 
The second defect, they say, is that it has failed to grasp that inequalities in the real world distort cyberspace and limit its potential for improving society. Media scholars Lynn Gorman and David McLean endorse the views of Curran and Seaton by pointing out that social ills have not disappeared with the extension of new technologies, real-world politics has not been transformed by the advent of YouTube, global inequalities continue to exclude a sizable portion of the world's population from access to the internet and all that it offers. They argue that media must be seen in relation to the contexts in which they originate, whether old or new, they cannot be divorced from the real world's structures and processes. 1.8 Summary In this unit, we started our discussion on media and society in historical and information age contexts. We deliberated on how communication happened when there was no mass media, but with the coming of mass media, especially the news media, the whole dynamics changed. The unit also looked at the theoretical underpinning of the relationship between media and society and analyzed various points of views. The power of media has been resented by institutions, especially political and economic. It is believed by analysts that the urge to control and regulate media emanated from a perception that media can play with the reputation of the powerful and mighty especially in politics and industry. We also looked at the ownership patterns and it was argued that when over 90% media is owned by big business houses, news cannot always be objective. The unit then looked at the new age media, the internet and its potential in making the world flat with common communities. Seamless markets and global consumers we also analyzed that anybody could write, say, and be heard may not be truly a fact. In an urge for safeguarding national interests, the whole debate on surveillance of the internet data has heated up and one wonders if that is the price individuals and nations pay for what seemed as free access and a democratic platform for information sharing. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel for more updates and we will see you with the next chapter.